nous acceptons de nous, de nous reconnaître comme tels, mais nous nous imposons de lutter. In order to make such a bold statement like the one in the title of this video, one must have been presented with a plethora of similarities between these African icons of the past and their modern-day counterparts. Leadership qualities and ideologies make up a huge proportion of today's debate which prompts us to ask these questions. How similar is Ibrahim Traoré to Thomas Sankar? In terms of ideologies, how similar is William Ruto to Colonel Muhammad Gaddafi? In an attempt to dissect these thoughts and questions, we'd like you to sit back and relax while we break down the legacies of these great leaders and how their ideologies should be adopted for a bigger, stronger and better Africa. First, let's start off with the man of the moment, Ibrahim Traoré and his similarities to Thomas Sankara. Born on December 21, 1949, Thomas Sankara was a dynamic and revolutionary leader who held the presidency of Burkina Faso from 1983 to 1987. He achieved significant milestones, including advocating for women's rights, health care, education, and land reform. Sankara also made determined efforts to combat corruption and reduce dependency on foreign aid. However, his untimely and contentious death on October 15, 1987, has sparked ongoing debates and investigations, with some suggesting that his former friend and colleague, Blaise Compere, played a role in orchestrating it. The circumstances surrounding his demise have fueled speculation that France, with whom he sought to sever ties, may have been involved. Thomas Sankara's legacy includes renaming the country from Upper Volta to Burkina Faso, signifying land of the incorruptible. He strongly believed that the French system was corrupt and aimed to exploit and manipulate its people. This fight cost him his life. Before his passing, Sankara left a powerful prophecy, emphasizing that while individuals may be assassinated, ideas cannot be killed. This prophecy has proven true, as just months after his controversial death, a new leader emerged. Ibrahim Traoré, the youngest president in Africa at the age of 34, stepped into the role as the president of Burkina Faso. He is not an ordinary leader, as his mindset mirrors that of Thomas Sankara. Like Sankara, Traoré is deeply committed to the betterment of Africa. He serves and thinks with a similar vision, leading some to believe that Thomas Sankara's ideals have been reincarnated in the form of Ibrahim Traoré. Many now view Ibrahim Traoré as the next Thomas Sankara. Just like Sankara, Traoré has risen against French influence. He orchestrated a coup that ousted the government, believed by many to be a puppet government installed and controlled by France. The country's natural resources were directed to France, enriching the latter while leaving the French African countries, including Traoré's own, impoverished. Surprisingly, the French African countries are among the poorest in Africa, lagging behind in development. Increasingly, they are awakening to the realization that France is a major factor behind their struggles. In September 2022, Ibrahim Traoré, once a low-ranking officer known only locally, emerged onto the world stage by leading a group of soldiers to overthrow the government of President Paul Henry Damien, who had assumed power just eight months earlier in January of the same year. Remarkably, Ibrahim Traoré shares several similarities with the revered national icon, Thomas Sankara. They both hold the rank of captain, took power at the age of 34, and brought down a military regime that had itself come to power just eight months prior. Their parallel journeys read like a gripping storyline straight out of a Hollywood action film. However, the truth is that Burkina Faso finds itself at a crucial crossroads, and the leadership of Ibrahim Traoré will undeniably shape not only the country's future but also that of Africa. Ibrahim Traoré firmly believes that France is the underlying virus plaguing Burkina Faso. Similar to Thomas Sankara's endeavors to sever ties with France, Traoré has already taken steps in that direction by forging business and military agreements with Russia, which has shown its interest in the region and other African countries. A significant event took place when Russian President Vladimir Putin organized a summit in St. Petersburg, Russia, inviting numerous African countries, particularly those under the influence of France. The summit caused a global stir as young Ibrahim Traoré delivered a powerful and controversial speech addressing the ongoing grip of colonial masters on Africa. He passionately emphasized that this is the very reason Africa remains impoverished despite its abundance of natural resources. He bravely stated, 
we are the forgotten people of the world, and highlighted their desire to discuss the future of their countries without any external interference. During the summit, Traore also expressed the alignment of vision and outlook between Russia and Burkina Faso, expressing hope for better opportunities in fair trade and establishing strong bilateral relations. The most poignant part of his speech was when he questioned why resource-rich Africa still remains the poorest region globally, lamenting the lack of answers to this pressing issue. Nonetheless, he remains optimistic about building new relationships that can pave the way for a brighter future for Burkina Faso. The leaders of African nations must resist being mere puppets under the control of imperial powers. It is imperative that we strive for self-sufficiency in our countries, including ensuring ample food supplies and meeting all the needs of our people. Let us stand proud and respected, achieving victory for our people, with loyalty to our homeland or the resolve to face death. This summit comes shortly after another gathering hosted by the US, inviting African leaders. However, the outcome was far from satisfactory, as no agreement was reached on the propositions put forth by the US. Only a few days ago, Ibrahim Traoré issued a warning to both France and the US, asserting that any threat against Niger's new military leader would be viewed as an attack on Burkina Faso as well. This warning has caused significant controversy and unrest in Niger, leading France to evacuate its citizens and any Europeans seeking to leave the country. Based on the above facts, we can almost conclude that Ibrahim Traoré shares several similarities with the late Thomas Sankara, a revered African leader. Both Traoré and Sankara held the presidency of Burkina Faso at a young age, with Traoré becoming the youngest president in Africa at 34. They both exhibited a deep commitment to the betterment of Africa and sought to sever ties with France, which they believed was exploiting and manipulating their countries. Traoré's rise to power through a coup, similar to Sankara's own ascent, further solidifies the comparisons between the two leaders. They both challenged puppet governments that were believed to be controlled by France and aimed to redirect the country's resources towards the benefit of their own people. Traoré's actions, such as forging agreements with Russia and speaking out against colonial masters during a summit, echo Sankara's endeavors to break free from foreign influence. Now in the same light let's build a case for William Ruto and Colonel Muammar Gaddafi. Muammar Gaddafi is commonly remembered as a controversial dictator allegedly involved in supporting terrorism through bombings. However, we must not overlook his visionary side, as he also stood up against major powers, advocated for marginalized nations, and championed a united Africa with a single government, currency, and military. Following Kwame Krumah's death in 1972, Gaddafi became the leading proponent of Pan-Africanism, ultimately contributing to the establishment of the African Union we have today. Since Gaddafi's controversial death, no African leader has been as vocal about African unity as Kenyan President William Ruto. His bold statements have sparked speculation about whether he might be the next leader to unite Africa under one banner. The African Union was created in 2002 to replace the Organization of African Unity, aiming to foster a more united continent. While it has made progress in economic and political coordination, it still falls short in finding African solutions to African problems and achieving genuine unity. However, there is hope with leaders like President Ruto, who could lead Africa towards a brighter future. Let's explore the possibilities of a more united Africa and discuss the steps we can take to turn this vision into a reality. While the European Union struggles with disunity due to language, cultural, and geographical differences, Africa, as a continent that has suffered greatly from colonialism and Western imperialism, is in need of strong leadership dedicated to its cause. With the legacies of leaders like Kwame Krumah and Muammar Gaddafi, it is essential to have visionary leaders like President Ruto stepping forward to continue the fight for the continent's unity and prosperity. Ever since assuming office in 2022, President Ruto has been unwavering in his commitment to fight for Africa's rights and stand up against the mistreatment of its leaders by developed countries. He has emerged as a prominent advocate for the continent, leading nations in addressing the imbalances caused by their Western counterparts. Notably, experts have drawn comparisons between President Ruto's speeches and those of renowned Pan-Africanists like Kwame Krumah and Muammar Gaddafi, both of whom envisioned a United States of Africa. During a recent summit in South Africa,
President Ruto passionately urged the continent to re-embrace Pan-Africanism and voiced his strong protest against foreign powers mistreating Africa. His words resonated with other leaders, resulting in a standing ovation. President Ruto expressed concern about the erosion of individual sovereignty for Africa's more than 50 states, questioning the need for their attendance at a U.S.-Africa summit in Washington, D.C. when they could appoint a representative to speak on their behalf. In essence, President Ruto is spearheading the movement for African unity and advocating for the continent's rights. With leaders like him at the forefront, there is hope that Africa can overcome its challenges and strive towards a brighter future. President Ruto has expressed deep dissatisfaction with the treatment of African leaders by foreign powers. He revealed that when African leaders are invited to global conferences, they face threats of consequences if they decline attendance. This coercive approach forces them to forego other commitments and travel to the United States, where they are often treated with disrespect akin to schoolchildren, given limited speaking time, and reduced to mere photo opportunities. According to President Ruto, such treatment of African leaders is unacceptable. He firmly believes that any engagement with partners should occur on equal terms, with foreign powers showing respect for Africa and its leaders. President Ruto is pushing for prioritization of the African Union reform program and urges member states to establish functional continental governing mechanisms that will bolster a robust African Union. During a recent conference, President Ruto brought attention to the demeaning treatment of African leaders, drawing on an incident from September 2022. He strongly believes that such disrespectful treatment needs to cease. In essence, President Ruto is passionately advocating for African leaders to be treated with the respect and dignity they deserve on the global stage. He is determined to foster a spirit of cooperation between foreign powers and Africa, working together to find solutions for the continent's challenges. President Ruto specifically highlighted how African heads of state were made to park their vehicles and board a bus to attend the funeral of Queen Elizabeth in the UK, while leaders from developed countries like US President Joe Biden used their official vehicles. He finds this treatment to be demeaning and seeks to change the negative perception of Africa, instead portraying a more accurate and aspirational image of the continent. In summary, President Ruto is a true champion for Africa, advocating for respect and dignity in its global interactions. He is fighting for fair interest rates on loans to developing countries, seeking to retire the unfavorable image of Africa, and pushing for reforms at the United Nations Security Council that benefit countries in the global south and respond to their needs. Notably, President Ruto proposes restructuring the Security Council to better represent the world's interests, granting Africa two permanent seats. Based on the above case, it can be concluded that there are certain similarities between William Ruto and Muammar Gaddafi in terms of their advocacy for African unity and their vocal stance against mistreatment of African leaders by foreign powers. Both Ruto and Gaddafi have expressed a vision for a more united Africa and have actively worked towards promoting African interests on the global stage. Ruto's commitment to fighting for Africa's rights and standing up against mistreatment aligns with Gaddafi's efforts to support marginalized nations and champion Pan-Africanism. Ruto's call for a re-embrace of Pan-Africanism and his protest against foreign powers mistreating Africa echoes Gaddafi's vision of a United States of Africa and his criticism of Western imperialism. Furthermore, both Ruto and Gaddafi have drawn comparisons to renowned Pan-Africanists like Kwame Krumah, emphasizing their shared dedication to the continent's unity and prosperity. Ruto's proposals for African Union reform, prioritization of African interests in global engagements, and push for fair interest rates on loans to developing countries parallel Gaddafi's efforts to establish a united Africa with a single government, currency, and military. It should be noted that while there are similarities between Ruto and Gaddafi in terms of their advocacy for African unity and their vocal stance against mistreatment, it is important to consider the context and specific policies of each leader. Further analysis and examination of Ruto's actions and policies would be necessary to make a more comprehensive assessment of his similarities to Muammar Gaddafi. So there we have it people. We hope you enjoyed this very special masterpiece from us. Please do not forget to like this video and share it.